Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for January 7th, 2022. This is the first Friday of the new year, right? So I am excited. I love closing out the week strong, heading into the weekend strong. Yesterday, we shared a message about Jesus, and we learned some life lessons from Jesus. And I trust that it was a blessing to you. If you didn't watch that message, you should go back and check it out because today we're flowing in the same vein. I want you to open up your heart to receive what God is about to say. And as I go into this B-roll video, as these things flash uh, across the screen, there's some messages that I put in here that the Holy Spirit told me to put in here. I want you to look at the screen as the music is playing and receive what the Holy Spirit ministers to you. Let's get ready for the word. All right, now we're ready for the word. I'm ready to release it. I, I trust that you're ready to receive it. Let's get into it. So this is a year of intentional progress for us. We're not just going to say progress is coming and all of that and not be intentional about it. We're learning that we're going to be intentional. We're going to be focused. We're going to be deliberate. We're going to be disciplined. We're going to seek God concerning what he wants us to do. We're going to get a plan and then we're going to walk these things out. So this is intentional progress uh, for 2022. Life lessons from Jesus. I'm calling this part two. Once again, uh, I laid out some things for you for this year, as far as these six steps on how to basically receive progress in any area of your life. And um, I'm walking through these right now in the first one, which is praying and discerning. And then uh, we'll go through all of these uh, as we go through the series. And so I believe it's going to be a blessing to you as, as it relates to praying and discerning. We've been looking at, at Jesus as our example, and we're going to go back to that example again today. So let's get into it. Um, what does this mean for you today? I have four things to share with you in this morning as I've been praying about what to do. Yesterday, we looked at a passage in John uh, chapter five. We're, we're going to go back to that same passage again this morning, and then we'll get into it. So John chapter five, beginning at verse 17, the Bible says, verse 17, I'm going to read 17 through 19, then verse 30. Jesus answered his critics by saying, because he was, he was operating on a Saturday, and there were some people that were criticizing him for performing miracles on a Saturday. And Jesus said, well, my father's working every day. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but my father's working every day. And so since he's working, I'm working. I'm in sync with my father. I have to be working because he's working. And the Bible says that this infuriated them. Even the more, the religious people hated Jesus because he, he had a relationship with the father. They had religion. He had relationship. And so it infuriated them to the point where they devised a plan to kill him because not only was he working on a Saturday, but... He also called God his father, the Bible says, making him equal to God. Like, like, how can God be your father? And Jesus said, verse 19, I speak to you an eternal truth. The son, I'm the son. The son is unable to do anything from himself. I'm not here to do what I want. I'm here to do what he wants because he's the one that sent me. He says, the son is unable. He said, I'm not here. It's not that I don't want to do anything on my own. I, I'm incapable of doing it. <laughs> The son is unable of doing anything from himself or through his own initiative. I only do the works that I see the father doing. For the son does the same works as, as he sees the father doing. Verse 13, I mean, verse 30, I can do nothing alone. Now I judge, I make decisions and my judgment is just. My decisions are good because I'm not the one making the decisions. I'm not here to please myself. I am only on this planet to please the one that sent me to this planet. And this is the way that we're supposed to live. We can learn some life lessons from Jesus. What does this mean for you today? I have four things to share with you in this morning. Uh, let's get into these four things. I want you to open up your heart to receive. Number one, your heart must be open and yielded to God in order to hear from him and to operate in his power. I get this question all the time. Well, Rick, how do I hear God's voice? Or how do I hear the Holy Spirit? Or how? I mean, you talk about this all the time. Yeah. You know why I talk about it all the time? Because it's in the Bible. And because I believe I'm convinced that there's no way that you can maximize your purpose and potential if you can't hear God's voice. Um, if you're not being led, you can live a good life by just reading the Bible and doing what the Bible says. But the Bible is what God said, past tense. 
But I am convinced that you cannot maximize your purpose and potential if you can't hear what God is saying to you right now. So reading what God said is good. Doing what God is saying to you right now is better, right? So you, you got to be open and you got to be yielded. You got to be open, always sensitive, discerning what, what God wants to do in this season. You get thoughts all the time that come from God. You got to learn to discern that those thoughts came from God. And then you got to learn that once you get those thoughts from God, you're going to need God to get them done. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. Remember, now this was God in the flesh saying this. I want you to think about this for a minute. Jesus left heaven to come to the earth. Jesus did, I mean, Jesus was there at creation. Jesus is, is no less God than God the Father, right? God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all, are all one. So all things that were made were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. And he was the Word, and the Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. That Word, Jesus, that was there at creation, said, I can do nothing on my own. I mean, think about how, how crazy that is. God was in the flesh. This was the same man that at 12 years old baffled scholars. At 12 years old, scholars who have been studying the word of God all their lives were amazed that this little 12-year-old boy was operating with a level of wisdom and understanding that far exceeded theirs. Why? Because he was God in the flesh. He had natural abilities that we don't have, and he did not rely on those natural abilities. He, he refused to rely on his perfect humanity. He was a human conduit of the divine. He, G Jesus yielded to God in every way, every day. His power came from his submission. His power came from his level of openness to the Father. And the reason that Jesus was able to do what he did, releasing heaven on the earth everywhere that he went, is because by his own acknowledgement, he was not the one doing it. In John 14 and 10, he says, listen, if you see me, you've seen the father because I'm, it's the father who lives in me. He does, he gives me the words and he performs the work. That's John 14 and 10. And two verses later in John 14 and 12, he says, you know what? There's going to come a day where I go back to the father and then you guys are going to do what I'm doing. You guys are going to do what I'm doing because I'm going back to the father because just like the father lives in me, and he gives me the words and he performs the work, the father will live in you and he will give you the words and he will perform the work. Jesus was perfect in every way, but he refused to operate in his perfect humanity. And I'm glad that he did because we're not perfect. So if Jesus, who was perfect, had operated in his perfection as a human, then he could not be our example because we're not perfect. But because he refused to operate in his perfection, and he said, listen, I'm only going to do whatever the father leads me to do. I'm only going to say what I hear the father say. I'm only going to do what the father leads me to do. Then we can do that. He is now our example because we can live the same way. We must have a heart that is yielded and open to him. As we enter into 2022, please look at me for a minute. Please renew your commitment to living every day open. You want to be open. You don't want to be closed. I want to be open to God. <laughs> I want to be open to whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. And once he reveals something to you, then you want to be yielded to it. You want to yield to it, even though it may not make sense. You want to be yielded to it, even though you may feel unqualified. You want to be yielded to it, even though it's going to cause you to feel uncomfortable. God will push you out there and you can, this is how you do the seemingly impossible. This is how the impossible becomes possible for you. Faith says yes to God's grace. When God reveals something to you, it's going to be bigger than you. He's always going to call you to do something that seems crazy. He will call you to do something that you cannot do without him. So you want to be open and you want to be yielded. You want to be discerning. You want to be listening. And whatever he wants you to do, however he wants you to do it, we're supposed to yield to him in all things at all times in all ways. And the church said, amen. You got it? All right. Number two, revelation is your authorization for participation. I'm not trying to get fancy with words. I, I, I'm, there's a point in here. Revelation is your authorization for participation. Let me explain. Jesus said, listen, I only say those things I hear my father say. I only do those things I see my father doing, right? And so he says, the father loves the son and he reveals to him everything that he's doing. 
And as the father reveals to me what he's already doing within my sphere of influence, then my job is to just get involved with what he's revealing, right? So Jesus lived every day open. He was always open. And so he sought guidance. Matter of fact, he was so open that the only thing the disciples ever asked Jesus to teach them to do was, was to pray. It was like, you know what? Jesus, they never said, hey, Jesus, can you teach us how to walk on water? Nope. They never said, hey, Jesus, can you teach us how to multiply fishes and loaves? Nope. They said, you know what? If there's one thing we need you to teach us to do before you leave, you got to you, you, you gotta teach us how to pray, man, because you leave in the morning, you go off and you spend time with the Father by yourself. <clears throat> and when you come back, it's like you have, you've already seen the day. You already know what we're supposed to be doing. We got to learn how to do that. Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus sought guidance. He got direction from the Father daily. And then as the Father revealed to Jesus what he was already doing within the sphere of influence, then Jesus saw that revelation as his invitation for participation. And then Jesus got involved with whatever the Father was doing. Let me explain. Instead of doing something, uh, that whatever he wanted to do, and then presenting it before God, like, you know, hey, God, let me bring this to you. This is what I want to do. I'm presenting it to you like a lot of us do. Instead of just coming up with whatever he wanted to do and then presenting it before God and then asking God to bless it, Jesus was like, no, I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discern and find out and be open to whatever God is already doing. Because when I find out whatever he's already doing within my sphere of influence, then as he reveals it to me, he's inviting me to get involved. I get involved at that point. I don't need to ask God to bless it because if he's revealing to me what he's already doing, then it's already blessed. So let me explain. You can come up with things for 2022. You can. You can come up with your plan for 2022 and then ask God to bless your ideas, to bless your your plans, your, your New Year's resolutions and all of that. And this may work, but at best, this is like a 50-50 type scenario, right? Because at the end of the day, God already made plans for your life. He already planned out 2022 before you were born. So while you have all of these New Year's resolutions and plans and all of that, and you want to lay them out before God, you can, and you can ask God to breathe on it and bless it and all of that. You can, but God is only going to bless whatever portions of your plan line up with his plans, the plans that he made for you before the world began. And whatever portions of your plan don't line up with God, whatever portions of your plan were something that were birthed in your heart and not in God's heart, then if you go out there and try to do that anyway, then to be very clear, you are going to be operating as a mere man, as a mere human, and you will be operating without the grace of God. So you will be out there. And sadly, a lot of Christians do this. A lot of Christians come up with, girl, 2022. Hey, let me tell you something, bro. 2022, this is my year. This is my time. I'm telling you, man. And then they lay out all the stuff that they're going to do. And then they present it to God and they ask God to bless it. And they put a scripture at the bottom of it and they put in Jesus name. Oh no, this got this got to be God. And, and they say, this is faith. No, that's not faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. That's not faith. Jesus said in Mark 8, 34 and 35, any of you who want to be my follower, you want to be my disciple. These are not my words. This is Jesus' words. He says, you must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. And you must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you for following me. God has never required any less than all of us. So if you, Jesus said, if you try to come to me, but hold on to your own life and your own plans and what you want, it's going to fall apart. You're going to lose your life. But if you come to me and you die and you give up everything and you say, I only want what you want, then you will live an amazing life. This is Mark chapter eight, verses 34 and 35. So frustration sets in where good people, I'm talking about good intention people, people that love God. Frustration sets in when people who love God make a demand on God. Right now we're fasting right? A lot, my church is fasting. A lot of churches are fasting. And so you can fast, you can pray, you can make a demand, you can do all of that. But at the end of the day, you can't force God to give you something that he didn't already plan. 
So frustration sets in when you're making a demand on God to give you something that's not yours. And so now you can, you're going to get frustrated because you're asking for the wrong thing. James said, you ask and you, first of all, you don't have because you don't ask. Second of all, sometimes you ask and you don't get it because you ask amiss. James said, you're asking amiss. You're asking for your own lust. You're asking for things that came, that were birthed in your heart and not in the heart of God. So faith begins where the will of God is known. God wants you to ask him, okay, God, it's 2022. What did you already plan for 2022? What have you already laid out? And then as God reveals those things to you, that's that revelation is, is his invitation for your participation. And then at that point, you don't have to ask God to bless it because if, if he reveals it to you, it's already blessed. You got it? Number three, once he reveals it to you, you cannot perform God's will without, re- without relying on God. So God is going to call you to do things that you can't do. God is going to call you to do things that exceed your power, your ability, your strength, your wisdom, your level of influence, your education, and your experience. And so Jesus said, the son can do nothing by himself. That was John 5 and 19. In John 5 and 30, he says, I can't do anything on my own. So if Jesus said that, then we got to live the same way. Jesus was God in the flesh. He was divinity, divinity personified. He was the only perfect human to ever walk this planet, but he refused to operate on his own. And we got to live the same way. We have to say, you know what? Jesus is not just an example for me. He is an example of me. And so when I look at Jesus, uh, one of the people in the chat, I'm not going to call out his name, but yesterday was like, man, Jesus, that's a tough example, right? You know, I, I know you're giving us Jesus in, as an example, but that's a hard example. No, he's not. that's not a hard example. He is the perfect example. G- Jesus is the example for us. He's an example of us. He's an example of what it looks like for a human to be fully submitted to the Father. And that's how we're supposed to live. He, Jesus was submitted to the Father in all things at all times. Jesus refused to rely on himself. Jesus refused to just pursue selfish desires. Jesus only did what the Father led him to do. He only said what the Father led him to say. And that's the way we're supposed to live. We can live like Jesus lived. We can. But we have to do it by the grace of God. And we have to do it for the glory of God. Say amen to that. All right, number four. The last thing I'll share with you for this week is I'm going to close out the week with a few last thoughts on everything that I've shared thus far uh, for 2022, and then we'll close out the week. So God's plans for your life for 2022, look at me, God's plans for 2022 for your life are already mapped out, right? So success is not a matter of more trying. Success for you is a matter of more dying. Success will not come because you come up with some elaborate plans and then you go out and launch out. Success for you is going to come through discerning and discovering what God already planned. And then once he does reveal it to you, success for you is going to come because you actually have the faith and the courage to launch out and attempt what you believe God is leading you to do. And then you got to be intentional about it. You got to be focused. You got to be disciplined. You got to add patience to your faith, all of that. I'm going to walk through all of that this year but it's all about God. It's not about us. And then it's about us being intentional and deliberate about pursuing what God is leading us to do. Hearing from God boils down to simply remaining open to whatever God wants us to do in our lives, whatever he says, however he tells us to do it, we got to be open. We got to be listening. We got to be discerning. God is always speaking. A lot of times we're not We're not necessarily listening. So we got to be listening to whatever the Holy Spirit says. And when God reveals something to you that he wants you to be involved with, listen, I know it may be scary. It it may, it may be like, oh my God, that's for me to attempt that. That's going to seem crazy. Like people are going to say, why does she think that she could do that? Why does he think he could? No, listen, you got to muster up the courage to attempt what God is leading you to do, no matter how crazy it seems at the risk of looking foolish. And then you got to believe it. You got to receive receive it. You got to see yourself doing it. You still got to wait. You can't go until God gives you the green light. But you got to like nurse it and rehearse it, believe it and receive it. It has to be so real to you in your heart that when God says go, you can go because you've already played this thing out in your prayer closet 
over and over and over again. You've seen your success, your business being a success because God has played that movie for you, right? You've seen your marriage being a success because God has played that movie for you. He painted a picture for you upon the canvas of your mind's eye. You've seen the promotion, the increase, the advancement, the acceleration. You've seen yourself maybe losing weight or being healthy. You've seen the vision of 2022 because God has played it for you within the canvas of your mind's eye. You see it as you're going to sleep. You see it as you get up in the morning. You see it as you go into your prayer closet. You're seeing it over and over again, but you still, you haven't gone launched out yet because God hasn't given you the green light. But when God gives you the green light for you to go, you've already built up so much confidence by playing this thing over and over and over again in your mind and in your heart that when God says go, now you can go and you will not be moved by the nose that people put in, in, your, in your path. You will not be moved when doors close and that door closes and you said, nope, but I already seen what God, what God revealed to me. And that's an invitation for my participation. And there's no way that God revealed it to me and it's not going to happen. So this is not, that no is not no forever. That, that door may have closed, but there's another door I'm looking for and God will give me favor and God will raise up people to use their power, their ability, their influence and their money to help me in ways that I cannot help myself. And father, I'm not pursuing my own plans. I'm only pursuing your plans. I'm only doing this thing because you told me to do it. You told me to start this business. I was minding my own business when you told me to do it. You told me to apply for this job. I was minding my own business when you told me to apply for this job. You told me to start this church. I was minding my own business when you told me to start this church. So I'm doing what you called me to do. And I'm submitted to you in all my ways. And there's no way that I can fail because you're leading me to do it. And I've already seen it. And I believe what I see. And I see it. I go into my prayer closet and it's more real to me than what I see down here in this world. And yes, when I come out of my prayer closet, the world hasn't caught up with it yet. Yes, when I come out of my prayer closet, it's like the people down here haven't caught up with the reality yet. But I am more more tuned in to what you're revealing to me from up there than what I see down here in this world. And I shall not be moved. And I shall not be shaken. And I shall not be stirred. And I'm going to say what, you, what I see. I'm going to say it until I see it down here in this world. And there's only a matter of time before I have in my hands what you've revealed in my my heart. And so, Father, I am living by faith and not by sight. I'm living by everything you revealed to me, not by what I see down here in this world. And it's only a matter of time before this stuff down here has to change. This stuff has to line up with what you're revealing to me. And so, Father, I'm believing it. I receive it. I declare it. I declare even now. Even, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. I prophesy over you. This is going to be the best year of your life. 2022, I'm telling you, this is a year of progression for you. Progress. It has to be intentional, deliberate, and focused. I speak to you even now. I encourage your spirit. You better believe what God is saying to you. You believe that thing it has to be more real to you than what you're seeing down here in this world. Do not be moved by what people say. Do not be moved when, when things get worse before they get better. Do not be moved by numbers. Don't look at numbers and say, well, what's going on? Listen, you, got, you can only be moved by God. I, I, I declare even now that your faith is being built up. I want you to get stirred up and edified. This is your season. This is your, your time greater is coming for you. I felt that. Glory to God. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Father, I thank you for taking the time to teach me about your amazing grace and your supernatural power. For years, I thought 